Ephesians chapter 4. It says from verse 21. When you heard about Christ and you were taught in him in according with the truth that is in Jesus, you were taught with regard to your former way of life. To put off your old self, which is being corrupted by the deceitful desires. To be made new in the attitude of your minds. And to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and in holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbors for your own members of one body. In your hunger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still hungry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been is stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Do not, do not let any unhandsome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage and anger, growing in slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and be compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as you'll be forgiven. In Jesus, amen. Amen. I want to quickly meditate here in Jesus' name about your new life or my new life. And I'm going to do very, very quickly, and the first thing I need to minister to you is that our new life is based in Christ himself, according to the teaching that we have received from him. There is no life without Christ. Sometimes we try to shift our behaviors and we can put a behavior for a while until we are pressurized. When I was ministering to the candidates to get baptized, I mentioned to them about the word sincere. I have told about this already before. But the word sincere comes from the Latin word without wax. And the history behind it is that in the ancient days, Travelers, they would earn money in selling pots. But during many journeys, sometimes some pots they would break, and those who break, they would have to throw away. But those who had a crack, they would try to repair. So they would put some wax on the cracking, and they would paint over. And it would look good. Until the pressure would come. When you put some hot water, you put it under massive pressure, the wax will melt. And whatever is in will leak. So many times we're just trying to change our lives, changing the behavior. Behavior is like to put a wax. I'm going to change my head, I'm going to dress properly, I'm going to drive a new car, I'm going to move the area that I'm living. And maybe it can be helpful, but it will not change you. Because under the pressure, none of the things you're going to 
hold what is in. When you put wax, it should look better. I don't know. I never been a night boy where we went many times. I did I did go to nightclubs for a very, very short period of my life. I worked one night and I said, Lord, take me from this place. But I know how many of the girls they arrive very, very beautiful with all the makeup. Is it makeup to go? And as the night goes and the sweat comes and the tear comes. When they look into the mirror, goodness me, who are you? But sometimes in life we try to put makeup over our circumstances, over our pain, over our needs, over our troubles, traumas. And for a while does it work? It does work. It, it works. Until the pressure comes. Mm. I change relationship and the new boyfriend normally is better than the old one. The new girlfriend normally is, is, is better the, until the pressure comes. And the hurt is start again. Because sometimes it has nothing to do with the other person. It has nothing to do with the makeup. It's to do with what's internally going on in my life. I am here today to talk about your and my new life in Christ Jesus. And the first news is, our new life is in Christ. Amen. 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 According to the teaching that you have received. This was the very first verse I read this morning. According to the teaching you have received from Christ. Our new life is not in the new philosophy. Our new life is not even in the gym to get fit. And let me tell you, I'm trying to, guys, maybe in February. I said it would be in January. I need to go there. But I know maybe you're going to give me a new body. Doesn't need much, does it? No. But, <laughs> but it will not transform who I am. The six pack will never change who I am. I can show off, I can pretend, but the internal bleeding because it has been with sear, with wax there, when the pressure comes, it melts. Today I came here to tell you, build your life in Jesus and in Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. We have the word that's the base, is on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, all the New Testament. Prophets from the old are parts for the new. Here is the word of God. The second thing that I want to mention today is a new life is a life of surrendering and submission. If you're going to live a new life according to Christ, we we'll need to surrender. And to surrender is to acknowledge that what they have, we will not take where really need to get. To surrender is when the army recognizes that the other army is stronger and they need to acknowledge that they cannot keep fighting. We need to come to this very place and don't take it wrong. Sometimes we stand here in a very religious way, but we don't surrender. In Jesus' name, I cry out this morning, let us surrender. Let us surrender before the Lord. Let us surrender before His Word. When the Word says, A, do not keep shouting B in Jesus' name. If the Word says, A, surrender to the A, even though you like the B. Surrender to the Lord, but I'll surrender to one another. Submit to one another. We don't like this word, do we? Submission became such a bad word in our culture. Submit means somebody going to overrule me. You're going to boss me around, you know. No, submission means I recognize there is something here that you can bless me with. The wife submit to the husband, not because he is the boss of the sense of he is this uh, fellow that's going to tell you everything you need to do, but he's there to care for you, to love you, to protect you. When the bad man comes to the door, he's going to 
should go there and say, look, I'm here. You will not come in. It's not to oppress. It's to get into love. When we submit to one another, nobody will oppress nobody else. When I, I, I surrender, when I, when I submit to my brothers, it's not to be oppressed by them, but it's to be cared, it's to be loved. It should be instructed by them. And sometimes they have words of knowledge. The Bible says, in the multitude of counsels, we found wisdom. Young people, let me give you a little tips for life. Even though you don't speak the same language of your parents anymore, let me tell you, they have some very valid things to tell you. They don't want to oppress you they want to bless and care for you isn't it mothers when early in the morning you start to shout from downstairs <laughs> yeah. it's not your press it's your good guidance so young people learn how to submit to your parents to the leaders that God is going to place on your life I'm not just talking to the new people that got baptized. I'm talking to all of us. But also you guys that got saved. Learn how to submit to one another. Learn how to submit to you, your leaders when they have a word to share with you. There is experience there. There is a word of God there. When friends, they come and say, hey, maybe what you're doing doesn't look good. Maybe you're going to hurt yourself. Guys, I don't know, but as a father, I want to let my kids fly. I want to let them do whatever they want. But as a father, I know that if I let them do what they want, they will hurt. Submitting, if the first one is to surrender, guys, and to build our lives in his word. The second thing, let us submit, let us hear the counsel. Don't, don't go there by yourself. Don't be the ones that know better. Have you been there? I know better. Even if you know better, hear a counsel at least. Share with somebody. Consider somebody that loves you and cares for you to say something of your life. Because sometimes, even when we are adults, we look like spiritual teenagers. I know better. No. You don't know anything. I have told you something that caught my attention, made me laugh internally. One day, I think it was Marcel was talking to, to my eldest son, and we were talking about school. And I think, I don't know if it was to, for her or for me, he said, This was in your time, Daddy. We are talking about school. And probably there is a little bit difference in time, in generation. We need to acknowledge that. But I still believe I have the counsel to give to my children. And I pray that every day they will be able at least to listen, to hear. Even if they will translate in their own reality, at least the heart of the message. So, first thing, build your new life in Christ Jesus. Second thing, surrender the old one, surrender your path. Don't try to do your own way, it doesn't work. Third thing, let us submit to one another, let us submit to the word of the Lord. Fourth thing, God wanna change more than a behavior. Behavior is part of, but God wanna change your nature. Because by behavior, sometimes you come here and put the behavior. But when you're struggling out there, you have a different behavior. The Bible says, be angry, but don't sin over your anger. What Paul is saying, I know guys, some days we're going to go through a term oil Emotion, you know, I was emotional like turmoil. 
We're going to have upside downs. You're going to say things that you come in between our teeth. That is okay, but don't allow the full sentence to come. Think. When you are angry with somebody, calm down, relax, count to ten, but not just counting, praying to ten. A lot of people say, I count to ten, oh, but I encourage you, pray to ten. Lord Jesus, in Jesus' name, I know. I want to kill my brother. Oh Lord, don't allow me to say anything until you change me. Because by my own will, let me hear your heart. And then the heart of Jesus said, Love him. Forgive him. And we count down. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't talk, doesn't mean that you should express. Or we shouldn't sin. Do not give a foothold to the devil. What does it mean? It means that it's not because you have a new life, because you're baptized, or because you are in church for 10 years that the devil is not trying to come in. How do I give a foothold to the devil? When I allow myself to be used in a behavior that doesn't come according to the word. When we speak what I shouldn't say. When I allow my mouth to pronounce things that I shouldn't pronounce. When I allow my emotions to lead me. Don't take me wrong here. I am not here to tell you that Christians they don't have emotions. We do. Somebody tells the constant pastor, I cannot stop crying. I say, keep crying. It's good to cry. It's good to allow the Lord to touch our soul and our emotions. It's good sometimes to manifest our fragility. It's good sometimes to manifest or at least to show our brokenness and say, you know what, this is where I am, but I know where, where I'm going to be crying. I'm going to be crying before the Lord with my brothers, with my sisters, with those who love me. I'm not feeling well today. I'm not doing good today. But don't allow your emotions to lead you to behave improperly, to abuse, to go farther than you should go. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in Jesus. So I'm talking about two behaviors here. A behavior of how we operate in our behavior of the Spirit. Both of them. You don't need to pretend. You can be honest. But ask the Lord to keep changing what comes out that's not according to His Word. The book of James says that those who come to the word and they don't respond are like those who come to the mirror in the morning. They see everything that is wrong. They leave the mirror and they don't, they don't do anything to change. How many times you go to the mirror and as you see your hair, you get a hairbrush and you start to, to do your hair. This is how it should be. When the Lord exposes us to something, is not to condemn us. It's to make us better. So there is no more condemnation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As John and Helen said here, what is behind is just history. Now we have a testimony that is to be built before us. I want to encourage you today in Jesus' name with this very quick meditation to embrace your new life. Not just those who got baptized for all of us. There is no new life out of Christ. Let us learn how to surrender. Difficult to surrender is pride 
holding us back. Man, you are hurting. Yeah, no, no, but my way. Man, you are losing. No, 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 I'm going to do it. Man, it is pride. The Bible says God rejects the proud, but he lifts up the humble. Humbleness to acknowledge, I don't have what takes, but Lord, here I am. I am a new creation. Help me to stand in the way that you want me to stand. Amen. I know there's major works to be done in my life. That's okay. We are under construction. We are like Bishop Stoltford. There is road work everywhere. And sometimes it's uncomfortable, isn't it? The reality is the engineers, the traffic engineers, they should be working to make the traffic better. They fail. But let me tell you, our God do not fail in the work that He is doing within us. He has the blueprint of your life. And let me tell you, it's perfect. The blueprint of your life that God has designed is perfect. Amen. And let me tell you, it's not just you that is the blueprint. It's your family too. Yes. I always want to coach the increase. The blueprint is for you and your family. It's for you and the little ones. What the Lord is building is for the whole household. For you and your children. Just surrender and say, Lord, help me. Help me to do what you plan me to do. It's not a matter of behavior, it's a matter of nature. And the last thing is, do not give food, away food to the devil in your life. Stand and say, in the name of Jesus, I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore in Jesus' name. I used to behave like that. I used to speak against badly, curse. Now, my mouth is an instrument of blessing. Submit to the scriptures. Submit to your brothers and sisters. And I'm not here claiming that you should submit to me, but submit to your elders, submit to your pastor. On the sense of there is a guideship, there is a counsel, there is a word of encouragement. Don't walk alone. Don't try to do it yourself. How many of you, and some of us we are good, but how many of us you try to build IKEA's furniture? <laughs> without not having a look. And normally we can until you say, but there is something here. Uh, Leftovers. Left, oh, goodness me. Where, 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 where? Don't do that because maybe uh, an Ikea furniture will not change your life. But maybe sometimes try to build your life without destruction. We will determine how you're going to live for the rest of your life. Isn't it? Sometimes there are doors in our wardrobes that they don't close properly. Why? Because sometimes you try to do without the money. Sometimes people, they break even further in jeans because they try to become a mechanic that they are not. I'm not talking to you. I know you're a good one. Check the manual. Don't follow your own feelings. 
there is your name inside of this book. And it has been written to raise you to be nothing less than the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. Through faith, also, through the knowledge of Christ, and through the unit of faith, we walk to become like Him. It's not how much you learn, it's not how much you preach, it's not how much you pray, it's not how much you have. It's how like you are. The success of your journey will not be measured in the achievement you made in life. The success will be measured by how like Jesus walked on earth. And my prayer that this house will never be a house full of people, but be a house packed with disciples. In Jesus' name.